you need to talk about always trade offs you know and this this uh, this particular scenario where you you get these systems either they are read heavy or write heavy this comes so frequently so always remember these tips this this should be in your hand okay if i have a read heavy system what are different you know different uh, ways to 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 design a read heavy system versus a write heavy system let's quickly go through this thing yeah, so that it can be referenced easily in the later case studies as well and you you always remember this thing uh, it, you, so that it, it's easily discussed so read heavy system how how you can like optimize them of course one is the the caching you of course since we need to read the data you can cache you should cache uh, and cache cache is like it can be on all layers from the client even client can cache a lot of stuff uh, then load balancer api gateway the read the, the the server the application server of course the database server the cd and itself is is a is, is a cache it stores you know step data your photos videos your css files or anything that that does not change you cdn so cache can be at every layer so so which 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 is which is to you know to reduce the latency of the read request database replication is as i said like you make multiple copies of your db so that you can distribute your read one scenario could be oh you you have this write you you can say a primary database and couple of replicas which are just used for the read traffic so all the read requests goes to uh, all the read requests they go to the replicas whereas the the primary gets all the writes and then you have to handle the you know consistency because there are multiple nodes if whatever is right happening to the uh, to the primary database it is uh, reflecting in the replicas a little bit later and that is where the consistency discussion comes and we say we are fine with uh, with eventual consistency so replication and caching other thing cdn we already mentioned it is used and they are these you know edge servers and the, the main servers and all these edge servers they actually have very faster connection with the main server and they cache data locally and then they distribute it it's very close to the user um, it as compared to the caching caching is i mean on the server side or if it's in the client okay that is their uh, different part but 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 all the server side is caching over there cdn is even a lot more closer to the uh, user load balancing uh, is also very you know it, it, in a way it, it since it's distribute traffic onto multiple servers so that one server is not performance bottleneck bottleneck it's a uh, you distribute you see the load and divide your so your read request, request becomes efficient as compared to all things going into random servers or so load server understand load balancer understand the load load from servers and distribute load based on that so the read traffic becomes easy data partitioning as i mentioned this is very important because if you have more parts you can read in parallel and the read efficiency increase as compared to if you have one bigger part reading from that part can 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 cause many latencies increase latencies or many requests going to that and it can be bottleneck optimized data retrieval we discuss a little so the data retrieval are your read queries so you can optimize certain set of queries so you'll see oh this is these are the couple of queries that are very very uh, you know frequently used so have your indexes around them or have their data uh, you know cached more or even you can you know vertically partition them vertical means like um, horizontal is row wise but vertical is column wise you can say so if if a query about a user is only always querying like a user and their email or their last login if these three columns are used by a query so put those three columns together in a in in one partition and the remaining column on the other partition so so in this way whenever this query needs to execute it simply go to this partition where the database has already been reduced to smaller smaller set of columns so there are a lot of optimized optimization techniques for read heavy especially the database that you can use you can actually read about this thing in the course if you see the grokking the system design interview over there we have like four sections one is this introduction then we have the case studies there's some glossary of uh, basics and then these are the trade offs that I uh, keep referring you can always so those so the, this last one i added actually recently this discussed all these things that we mentioned 
in detail with examples of the systems that you can use. Similarly, right, heavy. So database optimization. So generally what happens that for right heavy systems, let's say, which is not this system, but write heavy means they have frequent writes coming, not as compared to, you know, uploading a bigger file. No, they have so many writes coming, like like a logging system, you can say. Our logs are coming and they're coming at a very high speed and crazy numbers. Or uh, um, um, performance monitoring system, you have these metrics that are coming from thousands of machines and you need to store them. So all kind, all the, the, those kind of systems. So they, they are these specialized databases that are actually designed for write heavy systems. For example, Cassandra is famously used. Facebook developed it, but uh, yeah. So it's 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 a it's a columnar store. It stores data into uh, multiple columns as compared to multiple rows. So it creates a column for each, you know, you can say a row in the in the row-based database. So why why what's why such systems? There are deeper reasons why those databases are actually efficient for for writes, frequent writes. You can actually go read, for example, Cassandra about Cassandra. I can I can tell you, for example, at a high level, what I understand is the 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 structure in which they lay down their data for example cassandra uses ls lsm trees to to actually structure their data on the desk as compared to normal relation databases that uses that they, they, they use b plus trees so 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 in general i think the idea is they and what they do they actually have these logging systems or commit logs they call it so as soon as you write something they write it in a in a sequential log file and then they then they accumulate all those transactions in memory and later they flush it on the disk so they, they batch their transactions as compared to you know the relation database if a write comes it goes in the database all the way to a random location on disk you can say based on of course b trees b plus trees but lsm Actually, uh, since its writes are coming so much, they actually not do this thing, the commit log, the write ahead log kind of things. And then they uh, buffer everything in the memory and then they later flush it uh, over here uh, to, to the disk. So so specialized database for write heavies, asynchronous processing that you, that you know, for example, like remember YouTube discussion, you have the video and then you put the video in a queue. Like as soon as the video is, uploaded and added a task is added to the queue you can confirm to the user that oh your you up video is is uploaded uh, so so the remaining processing of the video encoding decoding generating thumbnails etc happen asynchronously so asynchronous processing is 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 quite uh, you know important for write heavy systems although read heavy systems can get benefit from uh, asynchronous processing as well as we can see over here or we'll discuss as well if you see the right right means when you have uploaded a photo so that photo is pushed to a task queue and then feed generation service is working asynchronously it a bunch of you know say servers or services instance and they get the data from the queue and so so but but for write heavy systems definitely asynchronous processing is used write batching and buffering the thing with that we discussed batch and buffer like you have these write ahead logs where sequentially you know so so what's the what's the issue with uh, straight away writing to the database because it going it goes into the random location and it needs to be updated into like for all the indexes you can say uh, but over here uh, you actually just do see you write sequentially in a log file and we call it like write head log file and then buffer all the transaction over there in the memory and later later on we, we flush it to the disk and if something goes back this memory goes away you have this commit log and you go back to the commit log and replay those log to generate the the state again and push it to the database so that's how they do so sequentially uh, keeping things uh, on, on on disk and then having a memory buffer is the efficiency that all these databases have uh, has been using data partitioning as i mentioned you have to partition you can partition make smaller chunks so that you can write efficiently into multiple machines together
CQRS, the command query segregation, which we have done over here, but it's mostly like whenever you say CQRS, command means read and write, uh, command query means read and write. So, so, so since writes are always heavy as compared to reads, so whenever you want to scale or optimize your reads or writes, then it's always best to, to segregate these two paths so that they can be managed easily. Even sourcing is, 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 is a little advanced topic. Uh, there's even sourcing pattern as well in the grokking the microservice design pattern. You can read over there, but it generally, it, it takes uh, their inspiration from this right ahead logging as well. So what happened instead of, uh, so, so they, they have these events and they, they store the transactions as a set of events. And uh, th those events are like sequential. And so whatever this, uh, the state the database has, they can be reproduced by replaying those those events. So that is how they do it. It's again, you can say, as, as I said, uh, inspiration from the uh, from the commit log kind of technology. So so overall, read heavy versus write heavy. This is something that you're going to encounter in every interview. You'll see, oh, the URL shortening is a read heavy system. Um, all these meta, all these social network, they are read heavy systems, but logging, monitoring, those kind of system, they are write heavy. And then you have to discuss all these things. This is, this is one of the crucial point, like the SQL versus no SQL is a little confusing where it gets, uh, it gets, you know, very, uh, you can say technology specific. If you really have start worked with multiple databases, then you understand, but, but this discussion is something that that is generic and more useful and a lot more expected that you know them, know it so that you have. So fixed technologies and you can always use them. Yeah.